Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're going to catch some mice with a very, very old style mousetrap. I have a huge mousetrap collection, over a thousand traps, and this one might be one of the oldest. I can't tell exactly how old it is. It's handmade. There's no maker marks, but this style of mousetrap has been around for several hundred years. There's quite a few paintings from the 1600s that feature people looking at a mouse they caught inside one of these style traps. It's kind of a funny subject matter, but it shows just how much pride they had in making their traps. They made them with precision. The door is made out of a heavy metal, like lead or maybe pewter. It's wrapped around a bar and slides up and down. It's attached with a hook and a hole right here to a lever. This goes back and forth, and on the back is a hook with a trigger. Now originally the trigger was a piece of wood that went down, but at some point they caught a mouse and it chewed it off. So someone made a repair with a piece of wire. This shows signs of quite a few repairs, so it's used to catch mice. In the back here, this is where you put the bait. Some of the bars slide out. They have a loop on top and you pull this up. You can see the bait hook. When you open the door, that goes back and forth. We'll put our nut or bait on there. When the mouse comes in and pulls on it, the door will close. First, we're gonna test it out with our pet mice, see if they go in there and get caught. Then I'm gonna set it up in the barn with motion cameras and see if we can catch some wild mice. We'll pull out the bar. For bait, I'm gonna attach a pumpkin seed with a hole in it. Put it right on the wire. Now we'll pull up the door and hook in the back of the lever. Let's go get our pet mouse. Let's see if our white and brown spotted mouse will go inside and grab the bait. Go on in the door. Oh, he hit the trigger and the door closed. That worked on our pet mouse. This trap's probably been catching mice for hundreds of years. We'll open up the back and let him out. Come on out. Good job. Well, let's go set up the motion cameras and see if we can get a wild mouse to grab the seed and get caught. Last night we caught one of the mice living in the camper. It wanted the peanut, went in there, pulled on the bait, the door closed, and we got it. Now this is a native deer mouse. It's not an invasive house mouse. Because we caught it in a live catch trap and it's pretty cute, I'm gonna take it out in the wild and let it go. Okay, come on out. Feels safe inside, it doesn't want to leave. Come on, you're free. The mouse likes it inside the trap. Come on out of there. There we go, that's better. Now it's so funny how the mouse didn't want to leave the mouse trap. It liked it in there. It took quite a bit of effort to get the mouse out. This style of mouse trap has been around a long time. That's because it works well. This mouse trap is very old and that was probably the last mouse it will ever catch. I brought it out of retirement for one last video, but I'm gonna put it back in the collection where it'll stay safe and won't get chewed up. Question and answer time. Every once in a while, I get a question that really helps out. 
I love suggestions on how to make my videos better. And today's question is from a YouTube viewer named William. He says, Hi Sean, I've been a subscriber for a long time and really enjoy your videos. Keep up the good work. An improvement suggestion I would make is don't film your question and answer segments, etc. in a white featureless studio. Few YouTubers do this. I understand you need to maintain privacy for your home, family, but it'd be much more interesting if done on location, outside, in the barn, wherever, even with the odd tractor or whatever's rolling around in the background. That's a great suggestion. I've thought this for a while now. It's kind of silly to just have a plain white background. Now I filmed this in my studio because it's so hard to get good audio outside. There's farm equipment going by, cars on the roads, airplanes up above, and worst of all, the wind. It can be really distracting and hard to pay attention. Man, that microphone picks up all that road noise. Really difficult to film. And people really don't like YouTube videos with bad audio. I have a microphone just above right here. I have lighting, but it's pretty boring in the background. So I decided to go on Amazon and look at different backdrops, see if there's something that would work better. You can get artistic backdrops, forest backdrops, or even barnwood backdrops. So I looked through quite a few to see if any would work. Well, welcome to the barn. I went ahead and bought the barnwood backdrop. What do you think? Does it look good? Does it add to the videos? Is it better than the plain white backdrop? Or is it distracting and does it look fake? That's my biggest concern. I'm really curious what you think. So leave a comment down below. Now one thing is I wanted to hang up my golden play button and add a shelf to feature different mouse traps. And I don't want to poke a bunch of holes through the fabric. So I came up with an idea. I'm going to try a couple different solutions and see which ones you like best. What I'm going to do is pull down the backdrops, the barnwood, the white one, and make a wall of solid barnwood, real barnwood. Add some shelves. We're going to try that out. See if that looks better than the fake barnwood. We'll do a comparison. Sounds like a fun project. We'll pull down the fabric and start putting up the barnwood. just held on with these clips. Try not to wrinkle it more. I have my helper here. He loves to drill. Okay, let's start putting up the wood. So what do you think about the real barnwood? Personally, I like it much better than the fake backdrop. It doesn't have that shine to it, it doesn't reflect light back in the same way, and it turned out much darker than I expected. I like how the dark background contrasts nicely with the subject matter, but I do want to add a few things. A shelf right here for the mouse traps, and right here, I'm going to place my golden play button. Now usually when a YouTuber gets a golden play button, they do a video on it, and I haven't done that yet. And that's because 2018 was such an incredible year for my channel. I gained hundreds of millions of views and over 1 million subscribers. That's a huge achievement. But by the time I received this in March, I was so discouraged. At the time, it felt like YouTube was sabotaging my channel. With age restrictions, demonetizations, I saw views go down by so much. As a creator, I really didn't feel supported. But recently, a new YouTube partner has been working with me. It's so nice to have a real person at YouTube not deal with auto replies and algorithms. And I'm so thankful for all the fans. So I'm gonna hang up the golden play button. Now I made a barnwood frame for it right here. Better get it level. There we go. Now these play buttons are pretty reflective. So I have to find the right angle for the light. See, that doesn't work. Got to tilt it down just a little. I'm going to have to keep working on the angle. It's still reflective and shining back. But let me know what you think of the new studio. Any improvements, suggestions. Thank you so much for your support. If you haven't subscribed to Mousetrap Monday yet, please consider clicking the button right here. Currently, I'm posting new videos every Monday. So if you want to see how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, foals, and gophers, stay tuned.